Hello, what's going on everybody? Just here uh, doing a little review of my Surface Book Pro 7. It is the 16 gig i7 uh, 256 gig hard drive model. Um, I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a feedback and a review of what I think of it and what I use it for uh, and whether or not I think you should consider buying one. Let's get to it. Video or photo mode on your dial. If there's an icon next to an option, it just tells you what this certain option affects, either photo or video. With that said, go ahead and press the menu. All right, first things first, things that I like about this laptop. Uh, obviously, the two-in-one factor. Um, I was very skeptical of this when I went, was first considering buying one. Um, I ended up grabbing the keyboard with it as well, uh, which I think you pretty much have to get. Um, you're really missing out on the experience of this laptop. Not to mention, it protects the incredible screen and folds up really nice. Uh, I've had it for about a year and a half now and the felt on the front is actually, it's not gross or anything. I haven't, I haven't left it in anything sticky. I try not to visit Pornhub too often with this thing, but um, so far so good uh, on that front. Uh, but the things that I like, obviously, very portable. Look how thin that is. Um, it fits right in your backpack. It's as close to... I guess like a pad of paper as you can really get. Uh, I often find myself just sort of using it to go to the bathroom. Uh, if I'm just browsing the web, it's it's replaced my phone in a lot of situations, especially like if I'm home uh, as my sort of go-to device in terms of, you know, uh, grocery lists, bringing it to the kitchen, I'll watch a YouTube video on how to cook something, and even just watching sports highlights uh, as I'm eating breakfast or uh, walking around the house or anything like that. I, I really love using my Surface Book Pro for. I, I don't own an iPad. I'm getting an iPad Pro later this week, so I will be putting out a review on my a comparison for that, so look out for that. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe. But uh, thus far, um, I absolutely love this thing. And as a laptop, it's very capable. Obviously, I got the top of the line, the spec'd out um, i7, 16 gigs of RAM. Uh, it would have been nice. I should, should have probably shelled out for a little bit more uh, SSD space. Uh, I got the 256 model, but it really, it, it's kind of a bummer that Microsoft and Apple, they make you pay so much money for those upgrades when uh, if they just made like a little slot where you could slip a M.2 uh, SSD in or something like that, you could save a ton of money and it would let you upgrade things in the future. Obviously, they're more concerned about making money, but uh, yeah, my rationale for what, for that was is I pay for two terabytes of Google Drive space on the internet. So the second I'm not working on something, I'm uploading it to my drive and I'm storing it all there. Uh, I also have a couple of uh, um, external hard drives that I have set up on a home computer that I use as a network attached storage. And I've also, so I've used um, one of these USB-C SSD slash USB hub slash HDMI um, connector adapters thingies from Amazon. I've definitely used the, uh, the SSDs as their own storage before. So anytime I've had to had problems with storage, I've just kind of stuck uh, my adapter in there and I've used my 128 gig SSD just as a bit of an external storage if I needed it. Other things that I really like about the, the Surface Pro uh, is the keyboard. It's really, it's really comfortable to type on. Uh, it would be nice, and this is probably a setting that I can change, but at nighttime, I kind of wish that there, uh, that the mouse would actually light up the keyboard. You have to punch one of the keys. You actually have to type something. So, but if you can't see anything, then you don't know what you're hitting. So you just kind of look for like a space bar or something like that. But uh, it would be kind of nice if when I just sort of swivel on the trackpad if, if that would light up the keyboard as well. Um, but that's just such a small complaint. 
Um, for the most part, if I'm using this outside of a situation where I need to type, like if I have the option to use this in tablet mode and it's not gonna frustrate me, then I'm definitely doing that. I love this thing as a two-in-one laptop. I, I was really skeptical in the beginning and I was looking at the price tag, like, cause this was gonna be my only mobile device. I was thinking about getting a tablet cause I really wanted to mess around with Procreate, but I just, I figured this would be a better alternative. I've always been more of a Windows guy myself, and I like the idea of having a full-fledged operating system that was per powerful enough that if I switched to tablet mode, I could continue working, but you know, from like sitting on my desk or going outside or, uh, you know, if I'm going up to a cottage or I, like I travel a lot on the weekends, if I, if I need to do something, and I'm on the go, it's really not that big of a deal to even just work in tablet mode. There's definitely some apps where you're like, I need a mouse and a keyboard, but you can get by not that terribly in tablet mode. And it's, it's this is the first laptop where you kind of have this portable, all working solution, or it's the first attempt at trying to be that, I feel like. Um, and it's a market that Apple doesn't want to get into because they want you buying an iPad, an iPhone, and a laptop. So it's pretty unlikely that anytime soon, you know, the iPad Pro will be able to do anything sort of similar in the sense that you, you, you don't have a full access to a full operating system. And if you don't understand what the bottlenecks are there or how, what the problems that arise, then you're probably not a professional yet. Um, just because you'd probably be considering an iPad as a tool that you could use with your workflow. Um, you don't have that problem with this thing. I can do just about everything on it that I need to do. Um, I've thrown 4K video editing from my drone, from my GoPro. Um, I've done a little bit of After Effects with it, uh, mostly transitions and stuff like that. Uh, but to be, I guess if, if I have to be brutally honest, it's not the greatest 4K editing experience. My home desktop PC has a 3900X with 64 gigs of RAM, a terabyte uh, M.2 SSD. Like in comparison, it, it doesn't compete, but it's also, look how big it is. This is a pad of paper. I mean, shit, like if I'm stuck out and I'm, you know, let's say I'm capturing some drone footage for, for a client and I, I'm just in a hotel room or even if I'm on site, I can use this. I can get by with this. Like, uh, I do notice Premiere is particularly tough on it, especially at 4K. At 1080p or anything less, no problems. I have literally no problems at all. Um, but if I, I really just need to do basic stuff, I often find myself using Premiere Rush. Uh, which is slightly, I guess, less resource heavy or just, I don't know if it's like because it's a newer version or because it's built to be a mobile app. Um, it just crashes a lot less when I'm handling 4K footage. So, uh, for example, the other day I was, I did a lot of drone flying for a wedding over the weekend and I was taking any shot that they weren't going to use and I was sorting them and putting them into stock footage in case that I was going to use it later or I might just throw it up on one of the stock sites just because if I already shot it then I might as well try and monetize that um, and I, I use Rush for that because it was a much more seamless process and I it was it was fun like I I did it sitting on the couch kind of like watching a movie I it it just it was easy and it didn't feel like work and that's like really becoming very important to me is picking the tools that encourage me to want to be creative that make it easy for me to make things and i honestly feel like this thing does now one drawback that i find and i find this kind of silly it's really unfortunate that microsoft and dgi haven't come to some sort of agreement but it really bothers me that i can't use this as a screen for my drone like i just think that this thing, look at the, you know, a nice large screen would be fantastic. Um, I don't get it. I don't know why they wouldn't do that, that there's no some sort of like Bluetooth connection or, I don't know. 
It, it just, it doesn't make sense to me. I, uh, it'd be nice if they could fix that in some sort of future update because I, it'd be really great. Like if I could go out flying my drone and transferring the files wirelessly from the drone straight onto my computer seamlessly uh, adding them into the editing program like that would be ideal because I would have literally everything just on the Surface Pro right there and I could do it all in a cinch. Uh, another thing that I absolutely love is the screen. The pixel density is actually higher than a MacBook Air even the new ones and the MacBook Pro uh, and it just looks really really good. The contrast is great, the colors really pop um, it is a glossy finish, so it is reflective, I guess, can't really tell, yeah, here you go. Um, if you're working in a sunny environment, it can be a little bit distracting, but not so much that, like, if you just sort of adjust the angle just a little bit, you can usually find that sort of sweet spot and really, uh, dial it in. If you have the brightness cranked, the battery life does suffer a little bit, um, so just kind of keep that in mind if that's something that you want to be really cautious of. Make sure that you have that uh, turned down, at least to medium. Uh, because a lot of times, especially during the day, you can't even notice the difference uh, between the super bright one or not. Uh, especially if you're not like watching a movie or playing games or something along those lines. Um, now I have tried using this for gaming. Uh, it was actually surprisingly awesome. I was not expecting a lot, I but to be fair, I only really play very, like not very demanding games, older games, like I'm a big Dota 2 player, I love playing Dota, uh, and I've also used this thing for Jackbox games, uh, and I've, and that includes like uh, streaming it, I've streamed it to YouTube and done like public games that way, uh, so my, you know, the Surface Book is actually running the game it's streaming it to YouTube wirelessly uh, and it's using a software like OBS or something like that uh, at about 1080p. Now, that can be like slightly demanding and it didn't have any sort of problems doing that at all. Now, that being said, if you were hoping to play like Grand Theft Auto or, I mean shit, Cyberpunk, <laughs> no, that's probably not going to happen. Uh, you'd probably be able to run this at like maybe 1080p at a 30 FPS or 40. It'd be very similar to a console gaming experience. Now, that being said, I did run NBA 2K uh, 2020, so I guess not the, the latest one, but it was very playable as well. Uh, and it just felt like I was playing on a, a small TV. The colors were really good again. Um, and to be honest, in those types of games, like single player games or sports games, uh, especially if you're not playing competitive, like I was just playing to really just to see how it would happen, uh, it was pretty great. And, and another thing is because it's Windows, it, it was really simple to just use the, the wireless Xbox controller just to connect wirelessly. Uh, and that was a pretty seamless process as well. So that was fun. Um, if that's something that you do and you know you, you're on the road or whatever you could literally be on a plane like again look at the size of this thing it's nothing and the screen's fantastic if it's right in front of you it's as immersive as like a larger laptop further away you know what I mean because your viewing angle but uh, yeah I was really surprised now playing Dota, I was able to get about, I had it hooked up to an external monitor at my girlfriend's cottage over COVID, we were fortunate enough to be staying up there and I would sometimes play with some friends. Um, now at 1080p, I could get around 40 frames per second or so, uh, which was pretty good. I thought it was at least, it was playable enough that I wasn't thinking about like frisbee, frisbeeing it through the window, which was good enough for me. Again, I know it's not a high resolution or it's not a high frame rate, but in a real world situation, and you're using this in a port, like if you're using this because it's portable, I mean, fuck, what are you expecting? You you want 4K graphics uh, at a cottage or on a plane or like, 
like get real as you know it's not gonna happen unless you're spending a couple i don't know four or five thousand dollars on like a razor blade or something like that and if you're looking for that kind of experience then you're probably not watching this video or even considering this laptop now one of the things that really blew me away and i will be honest with you guys this is my first tablet so I, I have never used a tablet for anything before. So maybe this is just me loving the tablet life, uh, like all of our older parents and grandparents who now, who always complained about you being on your phone too much. And now like literally every night, if you try to, after six o'clock, if you take that tablet away from them, they're going to be in a cranky mood. Uh, anyways, but yeah, I love this thing as a tablet. I started using OneNote. If you're not using OneNote or like a Notes app and you have a tablet or, I mean, especially with the Surface Pro, uh, I highly recommend it. This is kind of what it looks like. Um, you can't probably can't see my notes too much there, but um, you can type anything in here and it'll sync up on all your devices. So I have like my grocery list. I have things I need to buy um ideas like any of these youtube videos i usually jot down ideas in here um my stand-up comedy routines i'll if i if something i think is funny i'll write it down in here uh, and then any projects i work on like i'm frequently using this like i would write on a pad of paper which is something I didn't see coming like I've been a graphic designer for a couple of years and I've used Wacom tablets granted I never uh, dropped the money for one of the big uh, I think it's like a 12 inch by 10 inch or something it's it's about the same size as this maybe a little bit bigger um, I had a smaller one but I, and it was nice but I mostly used it to sign documents by the end of the day like I never I, I forced myself for about three days to use that instead of a mouse and it, to me it was just too frustrating but to have the combination of the touch screen with the pencil I, I, I find this an absolutely fantastic viewing experience uh, or interactive experience um, and then yeah I mean one note in terms of using a tablet really changed the game uh, just consuming any content like look at me I feel like Tony Stark right now. Uh, sifting through websites is way easier with the flick of the pen than it is with your finger. Um, mostly because you get way more precision with this pen. You know, if you're using your fat fingers, or at least my fat fingers, I hit everything else uh, just because you're still using like a full Windows operating system. So if you're going up to the top left corner to hit file like you have to definitely hit file and not edit or like one of the other 10 different things uh, close by, uh, which can be kind of annoying, but with the pen, uh, at least in the beginning, yeah, it really helps for that sort of precision effect. Um, that being said, now that I've been using the touchscreen a little bit more, I, I've gotten a lot better. I don't know if you remember first getting your iPhone, but it was kind of a similar thing. Uh, at least for me is in the beginning I was like this is very cool but I don't see this being practical but now that I've been detaching the keyboard more and more just because to set up this keyboard I kind of need to be in the same position that I would be in to use a laptop so sort of sitting up or uh, at a desk or uh, just somewhere where I can get comfortable to actually like use the computer and not get like carpal tunnel as I'm trying to uh, you know use the trackpad uh, but whereas with the iPad or when I when I have it as just a tablet I, I don't mind laying out or like lying in bed or uh, lying on the couch or anything like that and I can still kind of keep my workflow going I, I haven't really lost that many abilities um, I also, uh, I very much like the buttons on the side here. Uh, I don't know what other people use, uh, and I don't even know what the default is anymore, but I actually made these two buttons to be forward and backwards for web browsing. Um, uh, and then often in Photoshop, I'll set it as undo or redo. Uh, going back and then forwards again and I don't know that's that's what's worked out well for me um, 
I'm thinking about changing it though, because a lot of the new uh, tablet apps, like in Adobe Illustrator or Photoshop, um, <laughs> so I've had this for a year and a half. The first versions of those, oh my God. Adobe just released something to say that they did. They were really bad. Um, but again, because this is a full desktop, you can just switch the mode from tablet to essentials or advanced or typography or like whatever settings that you're used to working in or whatever profile that you have saved on your other computer or that you use in the, you know, maybe you have like a, um, uh, what's it called? Like a docking station set up with a bunch of monitors and stuff like that. You can still just switch back and then, you know, it might, usually this is where it's tough to hit it with your finger because uh, it's designed for somebody to be clicking it with a mouse, so everything's very close. Um, but if you can just sort of take your time and use the pencil and tap the, the right settings, you can get through that sort of bump in the road and then switch back to the tablet mode and then keep going from there. Now, is this annoying? Yes. Is it so bad that, is it more annoying than getting off the couch and going to your docking station and, you know, getting past that roadblock there? No, I don't think it is. Is it enough that, is it enough that if I was on the toilet working or somewhere where I like wanted to use the tablet mode? I don't think it is myself. Like I can get past that. And generally I use the tablet mode or experimenting and sort of playing with it right now for more personal projects or passion projects. So I, I am actually enjoying using the like new touch interface with the pen and just the new interaction with the computer that I've never had before since it's always been with like a mouse and a keyboard. I've been really enjoying that with the Surface Pro. Um, another thing that's sort of cool about it that uh, a lot of other tablets and lap, well, I guess not laptops, laptops would have like a regular hinge, but it has this uh, little support thing back here that folds out. Um, I actually can't believe how comfortable it is when you actually have it set up on your lap. Like when this is leaning back like this on your lap. Um, I often find myself with like my knees up and I just crank it back and I can kind of work like this from my lazy boy chair or this chair that I'm in right now. Um, it's, it just, again, it gives you a lot of customization for things that you can set up just the way that you want. Um, <clears throat> in terms of adaptability, or in terms of um, the I.O. or the design of the device, um, it's all very slick. I do wish that they would have included an SD reader. I really, it would, it just, it would have made a lot of sense um, just because, you know, is it a big deal to have one of these dongles? No, it's not, but it already feels a little bit flimsy in the wire, like right here, because it, it's often just sort of hanging out the side of my device like this, especially in like mobile settings or if I'm trying to work on the couch or anything like that. It's a bit of a pain in the butt. It just, it would have been nice if I could just sort of shove an SD card in the side and then you're ready to go. Um, even if it was a micro SD, you know, it's just a shame. And, and again, it would have, it would have also given you that expandability. Like if you, if it was built into the side of the computer, you could add that, you could use it as an external drive, for example. You know, you could get a micro SD that's a terabyte that probably costs you significantly less than it would be to upgrade initially um, to that uh, 1000 terabyte SSD that you can't do anything about later on. Um, now, for me, the, the one USB port is not really a big deal like the old one uh, because it has that USB-C as well. Um, anytime I need to do more than that, uh, a lot of times I do find myself, even though it's slower, 
I, again, I just use my drive. If I need to transfer files over to my other PCs, a lot of times I just upload it straight to my drive and I work from it from there. Uh, so I don't find that I need a, a, like any more than that. Um, I And I don't even have the craziest internet. I only have a 20 megabyte per second uh, upload speed. Uh, which is definitely slow when you compare it to, you know, what it would be like in an office or something like that. Um, battery life. The battery life is okay. It doesn't really blow me away. Like, I could get through about four hours of work. When that means potentially, um, I'm not going to say... I'm going to say video editing would be even less. I'm talking like just Illustrator. Uh, I got a browser with probably like 10 tabs open, probably a Photoshop open, uh, a couple of different files and yeah, maybe I'm transferring something or downloading something at the same time. A day like that where I'm pretty standard, kind of pushing the computer a little bit. Um, I could get, yeah, I get about four hours or so. Now, I, I've had this for about a year and a half. It was better in the beginning. What can you do? I, I For me, I uh, I was coming from, and I'll even show you, I was coming from an old laptop that I call the Death Star, and you can see it down there. I don't know if you can see that old fin. Look at this thing. Like, that's the laptop that I use all throughout university. Uh, and in college and the battery life on that thing was literally is about 45 seconds <laughs> and sometimes the power cable would like yank out the back and I had to run across the room to fix whatever was happening um, so anything from that for me obviously felt amazing but if you're coming from like a Mac environment where you're, you're used to using a MacBook Pro it might not feel that great. Um, again, I didn't do any thorough tests or anything. This is just for me, for my day-to-day -day life and my perspectives or how I just, I actually think of the laptop. Um, I will say, I guess a couple of the drawbacks that I've noticed is that it gets really hot and it thermal throttles right away. I know there is some sort of article online talking about whether or not it makes more sense to get the i5 or the i7, mostly because the i7 is going to thermal throttle so quickly that you don't even get to take advantage of the additional speed that comes with it. So while you, if you do pump the same amount of electricity through it, you will get a higher speed. It doesn't run at that high speed for very long. So if you're doing like quick little bursting things, like you know, exporting uh, for Photoshop or uh, pretty much any sort of graphic design related program, it's fine, or anything where you just need a quick little burst of processing power, it's okay. But anything where you're gonna need like consistent and steady CPU usage, it's gonna have a hard time uh, and it's gonna get loud and hot. So that's something that you don't really wanna do when it's on your lap. Like I, even when I was clipping those 4K stock footage that I was talking about earlier, in, in Rush, uh, I was using it like as a tablet and I found it to get very, very warm and it kind of stunk. It, it just, it was warm enough that you're like a little bit uncomfortable and it like could make your knees a little bit sweaty or whatever you're resting it on, even your hands. Um, and that wasn't the best experience ever. Uh, also, there's a fan in here somewhere in the back and it gets super loud. Like, if you're running in the in the bottom right corner, if you click on the battery, you can adjust the performance slider. And if you have it on top performance, like that fan just cranks up right away, and it's raring. Like, you, it's it's audible across uh, Discord when I was playing Dota with my friends. Like, they could hear in the background if nobody was making noise, they could kind of hear the. Which is, again, not the biggest deal, but it, again, if you're coming from a MacBook Air or, you know, a tablet, for example, I guess any Mac product, it's noticeable. 
you notice it. Uh, and I would like to think that in the next couple of revisions, that will be something that's fixed. Uh, if you just look at the power of the M1 chip, uh, there's no way that in the next couple of generations of these devices that Windows is not going to include something that is at least similar. Um, the more into the future we go, the more powerful these mobile chips will be, and at some point it you won't even know the difference between a desktop and a mobile computer. Uh, unfortunately, this is kind of the first device that, or at least the first really good one, I would say. Like I know there's a couple of Dell XPS laptops that are sort of similar, but when you fold the screen back, I just feel like it's not quite the same as this very slick, like pad it, surface. Like it's what it is and I have to say, for the first version of it, it's very usable and it, it achieved, I would say, what they wanted it to do. And I can't believe, like, if I was just a working professional, I think, and if you were ever on the road or if you ever, like, go from working from home back to the office, this is one of the best computers I think that you could get. It, it is phenomenal. Um, it's pretty damn powerful for how big it is. Uh, it, it really, I guess, it, until you get into, like, media-heavy, like, professional computing-intensive tasks, like 3D rendering, or, or video editing, like I've said, or if, if, you, if you're looking at a game, it, you know, it can kind of get, it, it's probably not the computer for you, but if you just need something that's pretty good at everything and you're not like hardcore into specific niche things and you need like the best of the best mobile gaming performance on this the thinnest possible thing ever to also be portable um, this thing can kind of do the trick uh, again at like 1080p resolution or if you lower the settings you can still game anywhere you want like look how thin that is. It's absolutely exceptional. I was surprised at how often I found myself using the touch screen, even when I had it open as a laptop. Um, especially because I actually find the trackpad, because the keyboard is so small, that if I'm sitting in my lazy boy or on the couch or something, I find the way that I have to kind of hold my hand and my wrist that I start to get carpal tunnel. And that's where I really started noticing that I can just use the whole screen and just scroll through things and it it feels good, like it feels right. And I I wouldn't want to go back from that. I I almost sold this thing because I was thinking about getting the new Mac MacBook Air uh, because just I wanted more raw power. I wanted to just be able to mobily edit 4K footage or uh, pretty much have the same power on my desktop but on the road or uh, just mobily and so that I wasn't locked down uh, but I just I had somebody that was gonna pay me a decent amount of money for the used laptop and I couldn't pull the trigger like I was I was thinking about not being able to use my hand and I was thinking about the fact that I don't have a tablet and I can't just walk around with this even with the you know with the pen at the top uh, I just couldn't make myself do it, and I don't regret it anymore. I, I, I've been looking at the MacBook Air, and I was like, maybe when this thing dies, I'll, I'll think about it, because the new surfaces, ha the new models haven't been overly uh, much better than this one. Um, yeah, I, I just, even using it in this uh, portrait mode, I was very surprised. Uh, the webcam is really good on it. Everyone, you know, and if you're doing Zoom calls or whatever, it, it definitely gets you by. Um, the wireless is great, never drops connectivity on me, um, as it should. <laughs> It'd be really sad if that was the one thing that Windows, you know, they don't include an Ethernet port anywhere on the laptop, and it's a freaking laptop, but the, the Wi Fi doesn't work. Like, come on. So that's great. Um, also, 
There's a couple of things like when you're using the tablet mode that's really nice. If you just slide your finger out, it gives you a whole bunch of options on the side here. Like kind of like on an iPhone, if you're on your side, but you want to lock the screen so that it doesn't rotate so that you can keep um, engaging with the device on that same uh, angle, you can do that. Uh, it gives you access to your battery settings, uh, different sharing. You can easily go from the, like to the Wi-Fi, and it, it's all like thicker buttons. So it's it, it's like it's a Windows options and settings, but it, it's made for this tablet version, uh, which makes it way better to use. Uh, I don't know if I just discovered this late or if it wasn't like that in the beginning, but um, when I discovered this, this really changed whether or how much I actually enjoyed using the device. Um, I also like the, the touch keyboard that comes up on screen. There's a couple of different versions that you can use. Um, so this one's actually, it's got the screen split into two so that I can use both thumbs and it's kind of missing in the middle. So I have access to all the keys on both sides while I'm holding the device like this. Uh, they also, you can have the, the big keyboard, it takes up the full screen if you want. Uh, I, I find that a little bit slower myself, but again, it all comes down to personal preference. And then for Word documents um, or emails or anything with a list, this portrait mode is actually fantastic. And if you're a coder, um, no, if you're a coder, you're not going to use a touch screen. So I take that back. <laughs> Uh, one thing that I did think was cool was, so if you guys use Steam, I was able to use Steam's like streaming feature on my home network uh, where you can like run the game off a more powerful computer but display it on the laptop. So I was able to play Dota 2 at max screen settings running off of my 1080 Ti and my gaming rig. Uh, which was then powering the Surface Book 7, which worked really well actually, especially for NBA. So if I was just looking to set up in my room and play some 2K, like before I go to bed, I can just grab a controller, grab my Surface Book Pro and just set it up on the desk beside me. And I could use that as a portable screen from there and I could still get the full graphics that this display could muster with the power of my 1080 Ti. Uh, powering it, which was really cool. Um, <clears throat> to be honest, I only did that to see if I could. Uh, I did it with the Jackbox game one time, just because I thought that it would reduce the stress on my laptop, uh, and just to see if I could And it, while I was streaming it, um, which was kind of cool. Um, but what I really used it for a lot was in Dota 2, you queue up for a match and it takes Sometimes it takes two, three, four minutes, five minutes to find you a match that you can join. Uh, so what I would do is I would load up Dota on my gaming PC, but I would screen share it here so that this screen would see whatever my main monitor was seeing of the game. And then that way I could like walk around my apartment and like do the dishes or just like pick little odds and ends up, make a coffee, or I could do whatever I needed to do right before that game and then when the queue popped up I would see it on my screen and I could actually use the touch screen to just accept the queue <coughs> and then I would load into the game and I could run to the other room and start playing but I thought that was so cool I, I'd never like seen anything like that before I know that's like an expensive this is a pretty expensive remote to be able to you know Get a, squeeze an extra two minutes of productivity without being a dickhead that you know just sort of abandons the queue but um, yeah just kind of like one more cool thing that you can do on these things uh, I also really liked the, the power charging adapter now one of the things that I also really like about the Surface Pro is the power adapter that it comes with um, it has a USB 3.0 or use the old USB port on here. Um, you can see it there. 
So if you want to charge any sort of device through there, uh, I believe it's a 10, 20 watt USB. So you can get 20 watts through the USB. I almost always have that just sort of connected to my iPhone charger. Um, and then it's just a dual prong on the other side. Uh, and it's just a 65 watt power brick. Now, again, this thing will get quite warm. Um, and it's not actually that long. Uh, what's that? Two, two feet, two feet and a bit. Um, which means that sometimes this weighted power brick, you gotta like put it on some chairs. If you got the laptop up on a higher desk or some sort of coffee table or something like that. Um, and then if you're sitting on the couch and it's kind of got across the room, again, you don't really want this touching your body in any way because it does get kind of warm, especially if you're doing something more intensive like trying to run a game or just have a couple of programs open. Uh, and definitely if you're doing any sorts of video editing, you're going to feel it get warm. Um, also, the other end is pretty sweet. It's got like a magnetic uh, power connector that just sort of sticks in the side here. You can usually hear yeah, the click, and then you'll see a white light come on right there. Now it's not plugged in, so you won't see it this time. Uh, but if you ever trip on anything, it'll just yank out, and the magnet's nice and strong, so it stays in there which is definitely pretty sweet, but I think that they could have made this a little bit longer. Um, maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm asking too much. Uh, another thing is, because it's only 65 watt, it doesn't charge that fast. It takes an hour and a half, I would say, two hours, roughly, to kind of get a full charge out of it. And if you're doing intensive stuff while it's plugged in, it really doesn't charge. So, and I'm... I guess I mean, if you are maxing out the CPU, it will not be charging at the same time. You will just be staying at that battery level and it's using all the juice to power the computer, which I definitely found somewhat annoying because like when you switch back to working on it, uh, at least for me, when I'm working from home, I'm constantly moving about my apartment with it. I don't want to wait for it to charge. I know that sounds like maybe I'm asking too much, but I don't think I am. Uh, it would be nice if I could get a full work stay out of a battery charge, then it wouldn't matter to me. But because, you know, I get through my morning and then I get into my afternoon, I plug the computer in and then I'm kind of stuck at my desk until it's finished charging. And while I'm working, it doesn't get me that much closer to it being finished charging if I'm doing something intensive, which, Again, if you're on the move or you're in a, an airport trying to get some stuff done and you want to make sure that you have your laptop fully charged to watch a movie or continue working on the flight, forget about it. It's, uh, it's going to take a little bit longer <laughs> unless, yeah, you're almost hoping for a delay at that point. And then, yeah, enjoy your movie. Another thing I like about the screen is I don't find it too small to actually have two windows on the side open. So it's not uncommon for me to have like a Word doc on one side and then whatever I'm researching on the other side. Uh, and I don't find the screen too small for that. Even when I'm using the touch screen, I find it pretty easy just to whip around and it's not really a big deal. Um, if you're doing something like coding or web development or something like that, that's going to be a little bit tougher. Uh, that I probably wouldn't re recommend it for. There you're going to want, I mean, but if you're doing that stuff, you already know that you probably want an external monitor and a bit more of a, a comfy setup where you can really fine tune those other settings. But when it comes to just sort of like schoolwork, for example, I've, I did a couple of my last assignments for one of the online courses I was taking, where it's mostly like discussion boards and uh, writing assignments about your opinions and stuff like that. I did some of them with the touchscreen on like do 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 without the keyboard uh, just sitting in my chair just because it was fun. I, I just liked interacting with the screen like this and I felt 
like I was Tony Stark or something and I just I couldn't believe that I just was holding this sitting in my chair like I just I liked it I thought it was cool uh, and I didn't think it held me back either so I just yeah I like and I, I think that's pretty cool anything that makes work more fun or not feel like work I think is worth the little bit of the premium that you pay now I also find myself using the laptop just kind of in this uh, hunched over mode I'm often uh, if I'm just using it as a tablet, I like having it, I feel like I'm using a piece of paper and I'll just sort of scan through things like this. Uh, I also find it nice that you can, it does, the the folding support bar will go up this far, which is actually really great. Because um, if you don't want it there at all, you can just fold it down and you can put it down like this, which is nice. But I also sometimes, especially if I'm drawing, I enjoy having like a little bit more of this bent uh, angle. I find it a little bit easier to draw on. Um, it's just, I, maybe it's just because it's more aligned with my eyes. I don't know, but I, I, I like that feature about the support bar in the back. So, in conclusion, I just wanted to say uh, I, in the year 2021, I've had the Surface Pro 7 for about a year and a half now, uh, getting close to two years actually. Uh, I've had it for a while. It's starting to show its age, definitely with the new M1 Max and uh, those new chips coming out, uh, as well as the new Ryzen chips, I definitely kick butt. Um, but I love where this 2.1 industry is going. Uh, I think it's the future and I'm excited to continue to keep having that, uh, those new interactions with the computer, you know, with the pen, which I didn't think I was going to like, I don't draw or anything like that really. Like I mess around a little bit. I, I do touch ups and stuff, but now I find myself like actively trying to use it. If I open Photoshop or if I use any sort of brush tool in Illustrator, anything like that. Like I am trying to use the pen because I really, really like it. Uh, and it was so great for just, it, when it comes to content consumption or anything like that, uh, I am always using my Surface Pro. It's become that tablet in my life for me. Uh, I bring it everywhere. I, I don't hesitate because it's so slim. It just like, it slides into your backpack. It's easier to bring somewhere than a book which, you know, really says something about a machine that can also edit, do some very basic gaming, and it can really nail sort of all the basic computing needs that you need to do, like any sort of email checking or browsing the web or uh, even, you know, like photo editing or something like that. You can all do that from this tablet, and it gives you full access to Windows. Uh, it's a little bit more and it's getting better. Uh, I'm really excited to see, you know, five years from now, like with more powerful portable chips, uh, if you're even going to notice a difference between, you know, using like a tablet slash, uh, but it's just, a, it's going to be a tablet that's as powerful as a PC. So when you, you know, go to sit at your desk, you're going to have that machine that is just as capable as your old tower that used to make a ton of noise and suck 500 watts out of your wall all the time. Um, and I have to say, I don't think I would recommend this Surface Book right now if you're buying a brand new computer, uh, just be based on the value that you get out of a MacBook Air at the moment is, I think, a little bit too strong. Uh, currently, just with the way that the Surface Book has been going I think you'd be better off buying a MacBook Air and then also getting the basic tablet the basic iPad with a with an Apple pencil and I think that you would actually be able to do all the things that you could do on the Surface Pro better with those two devices than you could with this one and they would actually be better at those at those specific tasks now that being said Having one device is the best, 
and having that fully functional operating system on that device is also awesome. So if you're willing to kind of deal with maybe having to find your own personal workarounds or something along that line or just being used to something where the software is a little bit clunky because it's made for a desktop PC or for a mouse and a keyboard and they haven't quite perfected that touch screen or pen experience, uh, then the Surface Pro, then I could probably recommend that to you. Uh, but otherwise, I just think in uh, 2021, uh, it would make sense to either try and find a killer deal on one used, then I would recommend it, or wait for the next models that are coming out that'll be a little bit more powerful and it will also give windows a little bit more time to really fully integrate uh, the software with the hardware in these systems but then also just really nail down the user interface and the user experience of the tablet windows um, i haven't got to try windows 11 yet i'm looking forward to it Hopefully there's some updates there that uh, don't crush my Surface Pro to the point that just running Windows alone becomes a strain on the computer and I gotta listen to that damn fan fire up and it melts a hole in my knee. Um, but yeah, that's my review on the Surface Pro 7. Uh, if you have any comments and or if you like the video, then please like and subscribe and follow. Um, I would love to keep making these videos for you guys and thanks for watching. See you later.